sure you bring your winter coats. It's a very chilly night here in Winnipeg with the temperature dropping to as low. River East comes into this match as the division leaders finishing. We're not. You need this on? Oh, it's right here. No, it's not. Make sure you bring your winter coats. It's a very chilly night here in Winnipeg with the temperature dropping to as low as minus 16. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for tuning into LRSD TV. I am your host, Evan Samoyloff, and we are here at Investors Group Field to broadcast the, the Division II High School Football Championship match between the River East Kodiaks and the Calvin Clippers. River East comes into this game at the top of their division, finishing with a 7-1 record. River East also has an elite offense, finishing with 272 points on the year. One of the big contributors to River East's offense is number 10 Sam Hezekai, who is one of the province's most dynamic offensive threats. He plays both running back and quarterback. He threw for 8 touchdowns for 520 passing yards, and he also led the division in rushing touchdowns with 11 while picking up 526 yards on the ground. I was able to catch up with the Kodiaks head coach on his thoughts coming into tonight's match. I am here with the head coach of the River East Kodaks, Coach Oleskowicz. Coach, first off, how excited are you and your team to be playing in the championship game? Uh, we're pretty excited. We're just trying to keep it as normal week as we can, uh, preparation-wise. So no different than week one to us. It's just a bigger stage with more activities going around the week. So we're just trying to stay the same. What, are you, uh, what have you seen from your team that you have enjoyed the most from them? Um, just their growth as young men and women. Um, we've been growing a lot. Um, in order for us to change the culture and change the program, it took those grade 12s to really buy in, so I'm very proud of what those kids have done this year. What areas of your game are you hoping to improve on for your championship game? Uh, you know, we want to be strong running the ball. We want to be play great defense and special teams. If we can have play all three factors while we'll be in the game in the fourth quarter with a chance to win it, um, that's what really what we're trying to do. I'm now going to throw it over to my co-host, Graham Forsyth, who is down on the sideline to talk about the Calvin Clippers. Graham? Thanks, Evan. Tonight we got a great matchup between the... Thanks, Evan. Tonight the Clippers come into tonight's game with a 7-1 record. 
Last time these two teams met, the Kodiaks won the game 33 to nothing. A player to watch tonight for the Clippers is going to be QB Daniel Narose. The star quarterback had 1,200 yards, over 1,200 passing yards this season with 12 passing touchdowns. I was able to catch up with Coach John Ramu of the Calvin Clippers on Wednesday's press conference. I'm here with John Ramu of the Calvin Clippers. Coach, congratulations on making it to the final. How does it feel? Oh, it's exciting. Thank you very much. The, uh, the kids are excited. There's a buzz in the school. And uh, it's exciting times. How big of an accomplishment is it for you and your team to make it to the final for the school? Oh, it's huge. You know, we always talk about Clipper pride at practices and in the team and the dressing room and stuff. And now the school is starting to show that Clipper pride. There was a really good crowd for homecoming and our seniors night, even the playoff game. People are wearing their uh, red and gray or their red and white. So it's, you know, it's huge in this school. So looking at the stats, QB Daniel Morose has been a very big part of your success. How big of a part will he be of your game plan on Friday? Oh, he's huge. He, uh, we call him our trigger man. Everything goes through him. Uh, last year when we were playing Oak Park at the halftime when he was carried off in the stretcher and uh, I got the news that he wasn't going to be able to play anymore. It was devastating, devastating to the team. But, uh, you know, a couple doctors, seconds, opinions, and then uh, the email I got in July from his mom saying he could play was huge. We knew that we had a, a guy we could build our offense around, and he's the guy that can, uh, smart kid, he throws the ball well, and he, you know, leads the team. With that being said, it's going to be a great game between two great teams here battling out for the ultimate prize. With that being said, I'll throw it up to our broadcast booth where our play-by-play -play and colored guys are standing by, Brian Cameron and Greg Kiesman. Take it away, guys. Well, good evening and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the LRSD TV's presentation of the uh, Winnipeg High School Football League's Division II uh, Championship for 2018, the CTV Bowl. My name is Brian Cameron. I'm, gonna, I'm here with my colleague, Greg Kiesman and we're going to be presenting the game for you tonight. We're just going to step aside here for a second for O'Canada, and we'll be right back. At this time, I'd like to introduce our anthem singer, Ms. Rosemary Tamandong from Living Music, Inc., and I'd like to ask everybody to stand for the singing of our national anthem. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Well, and, and tonight we have a, a championship game between the Calvin Clippers and the River East K Kodiaks. Uh, Division 2, live from Investors Group Field, so we welcome you for, and thank you for joining us, folks. Weather tonight, typical Winnipeg weather in November, Greg. Minus 10 at the, at the game time with a few clouds, but going to be minus 12 by the end of the game to, uh, at when the game is finished. So wind is not much of a factor, about 8 kilometers an hour, so that's not going to be there. But remember, this is still Winnipeg weather and anything can happen. So we got two teams, made it all the way through the playoffs, worked hard to get here. Why don't you tell us a little, a little bit about them? Sure, thanks, Brian. Uh, well, River East was in the uh, Bramwell Conference in Division Two, and they finished the year seven and one. And Calvin was in the Vidrick Division, and they also had the identical record of seven and one. 
Uh, these two teams met each other on October 4th with River East winning 33 to nothing over Calvin. So I'm interested to see how this is going to turn out uh, tonight. Semi-final game, River East was 51 over uh, 51 to 13 over Portage, and Calvin defeated Murdoch 31 to 24. So it's going to be a great, great night tonight for football. We have great field conditions, and I'm looking forward to a great game. So we are away, and Reese Wyke from uh, River East kicks off and received on the play by number 10 from Calvin, and he will cut to his right, find a bit of room, flag on the play. Brought down on the play by number four. Pardon me on that. We'll check on the flag. Um, but uh, a good start, a, a good run, but probably got a little bit of a help from a hold back there, Greg. Yeah, unfortunate for Calvin. They had a nice little return getting out to approximately the 35-yard line, but uh, this penalty will take them back First down. to about their 20-yard line. Great kick by Reese White to start the game. So this will push Calvin all the way back to uh, looks like about their 18-yard line. So they'll start first and 10 from there for the first series of the CTV Bowl and for 2018. And it appears under center for Calvin. Complete to uh, number 15. Uh, from my number 15 Calvin, Dason Jesmer McFarland. Pardon me, quarterback Daniel Moreau starts the game for for Calvin. A quick little out, about a six, seven yard gain. Puts the ball up on Calvin's 24 yard line, so that will be second and four. Very efficient pass on that play to get uh, some decent yards. From Rose back at shot, hands it off to 15, who will find a bit of room to the right, but not quite enough to the first down. It will be close. Pulled out close to out of bounds, and it looks to me like he's going to be at least a couple of yards short, Greg. Nope, they're giving him the first down, pardon me. Rylan Griffiths uh, from River East came up and made a nice tackle on that. He was on his, uh, came down running downhill on that one. He closed the gap real, clo real fast on that running back. So that will give... Calvin a fresh set of downs at their own appears to be a 28 yard line Moreau's in the shotgun and he will hand off again cut off and find a bit of room in the center is number 15 once again so three straight running plays for Calvin to start off the game Dason Jesmer McFarlane and I'm looking at Dason Jesmer and he had 33 carries this year for the regular season at about 121 yards So that will make it second and four with a six yard gain. Moreau's continues to work from the shotgun. Three receivers to his right, one to his left, and a back to his right, to his left, pardon me. And he will roll back and throw up and complete to number 17. And will eventually be tackled on the play by number five. So complete to number 17, Liam Stav Stevenson. Tackled on the play by number five, Ethan Top, uh, Topping, one of the safeties from River East. Calvin's going into a no-huddle offense here, Brian, picking up the tempo of the game here. Rhodes will hand off again to number 15, who seems to be his work on. We'll find some room to his right, but will slip and essentially tackles himself on the play, Greg. You know what, though, Brian? That was a beautiful shake and bake cut to start the game there, uh, with that first uh, missed tackle. It was a great job by uh, the running back there to, to evade that one tackler. So Dason uh, Jesmer McFarlane is carrying the, the lion's share of the work already. So that will make it second and nine with only a one yard gain. Moreau's continues to work the shotgun. Ball is up and he will look downfield and throws it up and oh, through the hands of his intended receiver. Defended on the play by number 20 from River East, Owen Unrah. Attempted to number six on the play, Robin Brooks. Nicely thrown ball. It just uh, slipped out of the hands of the receiver there. Again, with a little bit of cold uh, temperatures, ball gets a little slippery. Yeah, 
You know, Brian, that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. sometimes. So Calvin, sorry, yes, Calvin back to punt. A decent putt away. Oh, up in the air in a rough cup as it bounces back towards Calvin Players and picked up on the play by number 52. There will be a no yards flag on the play. So taken on the play by number 52, Joshua Desjardins. Desjardins made a good uh, decision there to pick up the, the punt there because with it bouncing back, the Calvin punter is sprinting downfield in an attempt to recover that. He's Obviously, if he would have uh, recovered, it would have been first down for Calvin. So that gives River East its first series. It's just on the other side of its own 47-yard line. 7.45 left in the first quarter. So they will be led on the play by their regular quarterback, Sam Hezekiah, who will hand it off to right first play to number 10, number 20. Owen Unrah tackled on the play by number 25, Adam Fast. Owen Unrah had 19 carries and for 270 yards uh, during the regular season, Brian. Nice little runoff tackle there for Unra. So Hezekiah works in the shotgun and will hand off to Unra again, who will go right up the middle and will get close to the first down. Tackled on the play by number four, uh, 94, Ryland Galbraith from Calvin. You know, Brian, it's, it's an interesting battle up front between the O-line of River East and Calvin D-line. It's going to uh, decide, any play along the line is going to decide the factor or who's going to win this game. So that will be first and ten. That was enough for a first down. So Hezekiah hands up, but he will he will hold on to it himself and swing out to his left. Pursued on the play by number 25, just missed, and then eventually first out of bounds by number 38 from uh, Calvin. Uh, Dylan Nicola. So it's a gain of about seven yards. Good run by Hezekiah. Hezekiah has some uh, pretty good wheels there. He's, yeah. he's very uh, lethal when he gets out of the pocket. Calvin's going to have to watch that. So second and three from the 45-yard line of Hezekiah. Handed off to number 20 again, who will push and push and push. Not sure if he got there. We'll find out in just a moment, but... Tackled on the play by sort of number 94 from Calvin. Galbraith. Looks like it's enough for a first down, though. So a good rush there uh, by uh, uh, Dason Jesmer McFarlane. As the tie works in the shotgun, and he will hand on, and he will hang on to itself a fake handoff, and then hangs onto it and it continues He's to still push, going. and he drives up for about another 12 yards, maybe even 13. What a fantastic run! Some serious pop in there. So that will make it first and 10 from Calvin's 29 yard line. River East has a great series going right now. Hezekiah will pitch out, but it's fumble. It's behind him and he unfortunately for River East, they will have to fall on the, on the ball. So number 20 Unra will have to cover up. Hez they Hezekiah took a little bit of a, of a hit there. Uh Hopefully he's, he's going to be okay. Well, he looks like he's walking along okay. He was a little slow getting up. That will make it second and 17 from Calvin's 36-yard line. Hezekiah continues to work in the shotgun, and this time he looks, and he's going to throw it up to an open receiver. All the way in, eventually tackled on the plate, down to about the three-yard line. Great throw by Hezekiah. 
Beautiful throw, tight spiral on that ball. Beautiful fade pattern run by number one, Reese Wick. Wonderful play getting uh, uh, the Kodiaks down to about the four yard line, Brian. And River East is pushing it up right away and they're gonna run almost immediately. And Hezekiah grabs it and he will shake off one tackle but not enough and will eventually be pushed back to the five for a bit of a loss. Tackled on the play by number 99, Isaiah Latander. Isaiah will represent Canada in the under 18s this year. So second down and goal from the five. First team to enter into the red zone, Brian. But Hezekiah works from a shotgun and he will pitch back to Unra again. who will try to cut back towards the middle, but nothing there and maybe back to the, the, the line of scrimmage, pardon me. Tackled on the play by number 96, Dylan Hess. Third and goal, Brian. Uh, looks like they're going to send out the field goal team here for Cal for uh, the Kodiaks. Good series from River East. That's a great job to stop them on the four and not give up a touchdown here for, for the Clipper defense. And that will be up, and that will be good. So the River East Kodiaks open up the score, three to nothing, with 2:33 left in the first quarter. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, field goal for the Kodiaks. So Reese White puts the River East Kodiaks up, three to nothing. A great series, good start, and we saw some uh, pretty good football in the first uh, almost 10 minutes of this game, Greg. Yeah, both teams have come out ready to play and, and uh, obviously uh, they're ready and stoked and, and ready to play this game and, and put it all on the field to win this championship for their school. What a difference having a wide open field next today, Greg. Yeah, last night we were covering both uh, both of the Winnipeg High School Football League Championship games, the JV and, and the Canada Inns Bowl. And between the snow, uh, it was very hard to see the yard line. So beautiful field conditions today. So Reese, Reese Wyke again puts the ball up and a great kick. He is kicking well. Fielded at about the 15 yard line. Brought, brought up the field by number 10 from Calvin and that's Tremaine Reed. Brings it all the way up to about the 40 yard line or just short of the 40 yard line. Great run by Tremaine Reed. So Calvin will take over for their second offense of the game from their own 39 yard line. Coach Ramu, I'm sure, is very happy with that field position for uh, the Clippers to start off with. Let's see what they can do. Run on the play by number 15. Once again, Jason Jesmer McFarland. Good job by the uh, the Kodiak defense there to put the Clippers in a second and long situation. So Daniel Moreau's continues at quarterback. And this time he will throw back the pass and looking outside to number 17 again. Brought down on the play by number 18 from River East. And that's tackled by Brandon Vandale. Oh, Brian, on the play to Liam Stevenson. There's a flag on a play, Brian. Uh, Mraz take a, took a late hit there from the Kodiak defense. So this will be a first down for, Cal, for Calvin. First down. Obviously one of the game plans is for River East to put Mraz Rose on his uh, keister early and get in his face. Well, that gives Calvin fantastic field position at River East's 49-yard line. So Moreau's continues to work the shotgun. Two receivers to his left, two to his right. And a flag on the play, and he throws it up, uh, looking outside to number 25, Adam Fast. This one's going to come, uh, this is going to be a penalty against Calvin. Number two, Brock Gates was a little bit uh, early crossing the line of scrimmage there. Hey. 
waiting to hear the call. Yeah. Offside, Kelvin number two. That penalty is declined. Second down. So River East has chosen to decline the penalty. So that will make it second and ten. Continuing from River East 49-yard line. Moreau's in the shotgun. Once again, one back. Two receivers on each side of him. And again, he will drop back and he will throw the ball up. <laughs> Defended on the play by number 25 from River East and that's Joseph Funk Clements. And number 25 from Calvin, I think, felt he was interfered with and there should have been a flag and that would be Adam Fast. And tough call. Sometimes that's the way the cookie crumbles. It sure does, Brian. It sure does. That was uh, that wasn't uh, Moroz's best throw of the night for sure. Uh, interesting to to read about um, Daniel Moroz. He's an IB student over at Calvin. Good to good to have a smart quarterback. So this forces Calvin to punt. A low throwing pump, and it sort of bounces up in the middle, and it will come into. And we will have a no no yards penalty fielded on the play by number 15 from River East, Sean Anderson. Tackled on the play by number 96, Dylan Hess. So River East will Flags take over. It looks like at about the probably be moved up to about the 34 yard line. Five yard penalty, Brian. Well, that. At Calvin, 12 15, seconds left in the first quarter here. Teams are first both down. evenly matched and are able to move the ball. So River, River East continues with their, uh, now, sorry, starts with their second offense of the game. This should be the final play of the first quarter. Run by number 10, Hezekiah, who will push and push and will get a first down on the play or very close to it. Pretty sure that he got it, though. So I'm reading here that Hezekiah is, uh, is a CFC top 50 uh, player and is committed to the University of Manitoba for next year. Coach Brian Doby, I'm sure, is excited to have him on uh, on the roster for next year. Six feet, six feet 205. He's a big young man. Yep. So penalty on the play pushes the ball way deep all the way to the 45 yard line so oh pardon me i was so wrapped up in the game i forgot that we had to switch and end sorry folks so we will start first and 10 minute run by 10 hezekiah again continues to hang on to the ball but this time pursued pretty closely Tackled on the play by number 99, Isaiah Latonder. Hezekiah had a nice jump over the first initial tacker there. Wow. I'm very impressed with this young player so far. Well, he did have 30, 38 carries for 526 yards in the regular season. You love a quarterback that has dual threat. He can run or pass. Hezekiah in the shotgun. And this time he will look to pass, and he's got lots of time. Complete to a wide open receiver, number 25 will be eventually pushed out of bounds. Pushed out of bounds by number two from Calvin, Brock Gates. So complete to number 25, Joseph Funk Clements. Funk Clements uh, of interest was a U18 touch football gold medal winner. I think he's probably played, uh, he's uh, caught a few passes playing touch football. This time Hezekiah has two backs with him, three to his right. And he will hand off, run by number 25, 21 Rog, and we'll get a flag, and we got a flag down again. This time they're indicating against River East, though. Head referee Ken Lazarick uh, made the call on this one. Ken's uh, 
a very seasoned uh, referee. He's done a number of Grey Cup games in the CFL. So I'm sure he knows what he's calling out there. Holding, River East, number 27, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. So that will make it first and 20 and bring the ball back all the way to the 54-yard line of River East. I'm just watching Brian Owen. Unrod just came off the field. He's favoring his leg, his knee. So let's see how that plays out for River East. As the choir looks, and this time nothing there, and he will continue. He'll roll to his right and throw the ball up. Oh, through the hands of his intended receiver, number 25, Joseph Funkett Clements, defended on the, on the play by number two, Brock Gates, and number six, Robin Brooks. Brock Gates is a two-way starter for the Clippers. He's also a member of the hockey team, Brian. He almost had the pick on that play. Good job by Hezekiah to roll out to his right there and find the open receiver. Receiver was smart to just run down the sidelines and get open. So Hezekiah, second and 20. Back and he will look, and he will look to his middle and he will throw it up. Intercepted on the play by number two from Calvin Rock, Brock flying on the play. And given that River East is coming off the field, or it appears to be headed off the field. Well, I uh, checked that. We're waiting for, for a call from the referees, but the River East offense is in fact waiting. I think Hezekiah just put a little bit too much air underneath that pass. The receiver was initially open. Keep time to adjust. Yeah, defense was able to make that adjustment. So it appears that it will be. Ineligible receiver, River East, number 52, downfield. Yeah, the penalty, that penalty is against declined. River East, so it is First Calvin, down Calvin Ball. Great interception by Brock Gates. Last night, Brian. There is a ton of tur turnovers in the in the bowl games. This is really the first turnover that we've seen. So we'll see if Calvin can uh, turn around and put some points on the board off this turnover. So they will start from their 24-yard line. 9.35 left in the second quarter. Rose will throw. Oh, but tipped up to the play. Almost intercepted by number 22 from River East. Simon Cosman. That's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, Brian. Get in and out of the hands. I'm sure the, the DB would like to have that one back. I'm sure that the young quarterback there, Daniel Morose, would like to have that one back. So he will continue from the shotgun. Two receivers, three receivers to his right, two to his left. Drops back. Rolls out. Oh, and fumbles the football. They're calling it incomplete. Okay. So fumble on the play, fortunately. Uh, it, it was actually, sorry, incomplete on the play, fortunately, for Calvin Clipper. Or else the uh, River East Kodiaks had a great field position. So that will make it third and ten. So not able to take advantage of that turnover. Yeah, I'm sure Coach uh, Ramu is a little disappointed in a two and out here after the turnover. Hope, you know, I'm sure he's hoping that the team would flip the field and get uh, get cr at least across midfield here and put uh, give River East a much longer field to play in. Punt blocked. is blocked, and it will be picked up by number. 25 from uh, River East who will score the first touchdown of the game, Joseph Funk Clements. Josh Jajarlis had the block on that, Brian. Great job by 52. And folks at home, you gotta love it. And boom goes the dynamite, Brian. Huge play for River East. 
So that puts them up nine to nothing with 8.32 left in the second quarter. Flag on the play, so we're gonna see what that call is. Yeah, it Calvin is has one too many players on the field there. So with 8.32 left in the second quarter, Cal uh, River East is up 10 to nothing over Calvin. We'll see what happens if Calvin can make something happen once they get the football back. How exciting for some of these players to score a touchdown championship game. What a great opportunity. What a great memory for some of these players to be out here and playing under the big lights and Friday night lights. So Coach Rob is going to have to get his troops on. Too many players. Calvin, that 10 yard penalty will be applied on the kickoff. Uh, make it positive plays One point. on the field. So that penalty pushes the football up to the 55 yard line. And that's where River East will kick off. So I'm just looking at some of the stats here. 52 Joshua Dejarle is uh, who had the block on that. He's also part of Team, to team Manitoba. So Can kicked see by Reese, Reese Wyke who has really been kicking well. Picked up and returned by number 10 from Calvin, who will continue and push and push and eventually be tackled down at about the 31 32 yard line. So, good job by number 10, Tremaine Reed, to get up to the 32 yard line. Tackled on the play by number 80, Ashton Elias. Well, Brian, I'm interested to see how uh, Kelvin reacts here now. Are they going to come out and have a little enthusiasm, or are they going to sag after that uh, special teams touchdown against? Well, lots of football left. So rolling out to his right, but being pursued heavily and trying to find some room and cutting back upfield again and get should get up and maybe just beyond the line of scrimmage, so not a total loss. Pursued by number five, Ethan Topping. And Dejarle was in there as well, Brian. Good effort just to get outside and avoid the rush. works the shotgun two receivers to each side of him he roll back and this time he will roll out to his right and look for something Com complete to number 25 who will get out at about a 40 yard line so complete to number 25 yet Adam fast River East is just bringing the heat here they're trying to pop him So second and short, and Moroz will hand off, and finding lots of room up the middle is number 17 from Calvin, Liam Stevenson. And we'll have more than enough for the first down to keep this drive going. Uh, Coach Romney's happy with that result, because that's third and short. And Moroz will get his troops up almost to the line immediately and push the football. Rose will hand inside to number 15. Jason Jesmer McFarland again. About a gain of about three yards. So we're looking at second and seven. Good job by the River East uh, Kodiak defensive line not to give up a, a lot of yards on that play. 
just short of their own 50 yard line and Moroz will continue to work the shotgun this time three receivers to his right only one to his left and he will hand in one more time to number 15 Jess McFarland this time there's a fumble on the play and it is recovered on the play by number five Ethan Topping so River East will take over the refs are conversing Jesmer McFarland saying that he was down you know, just watching at the replay here, I, I almost think that his left elbow is down. So if we can get a an instant replay of that. So we're waiting for the call from the ref, and there's a real discussion going on. That's a it's a tough call, Brian. That's uh, it was instantaneous. And I, you got to be sure that the refs want to get this right, being a championship game, especially. I'll tell you, it's interesting how this place can get so quiet so quickly, Greg. <laughs> Still haven't heard it. Oh, they're ruling the that he was down. Out of the uh, ball carrier's hands. His knee was on the ground. There's no fumble. It'll be a third down. So it will continue to be Calvin Ball, but it is short of the first down. So. Just needing almost a full five yards, so third and five. Well, you know, Coach Ramu is going to be uh, uh, fairly happy that uh, his troops were able to come out and get a couple first downs, move the ball to approximately midfield here in, in a punting situation. So punted on the play by number nine, Ethan Nagler. Returned on the play by number five and tackled on the play by number two and flag on the play. Nice job just uh, for the return guy to just catch it in the air. And I know uh, number two, Brock Gates, was the first tackler downfield to make that play. So, so picked up on the play by, uh, sorry, returned on the play by Funk Clements, but tackled by Brock Gates and flag on the play. So. What did you see in there that would bring a flag, Rick? I didn't see anything, at Major least at the foul, point of play. Face mask. Yeah, I had uh, a feeling as he said that, that there might have been a face, face mask Kenley. call right at the end. First oh, down. yeah, we could see it now, just on the replay. So that will push that back quite a bit. That's against River East, though. I didn't see where the face masking was on that. I thought it was on the tackle. So just on this side of their 10 yard line and River East will take over with 535 left in the second quarter. That's a huge flip of the field for Calvin. Up 10 to nothing. So Hezekiah will start off and he will look to pass and he will throw it up deep. Looking yeah. for number one and caught on the play and tackled at the 50 yard line. What a great throw by Hezekiah to number one from River East, Reese White. Folks at home, you love to see it. What a beautiful pass and catch by River East. That play was dynamite. Great throw by Hezekiah. Great time up front for him too from his offensive line, Greg. Yeah, no, they're, uh, they're giving uh, Hezekiah tons of time here. So Hezekiah will hand off this time, hand it off to Unrod. Number 20 will find a bit of a room on some left and then cut back in towards the middle and we get it up for the first down. Just inside the 40 yard line, tackled on the play by number 50 from Calvin. A little bit of shake and bake. Brian, that play was dynamite. Eric Duquette in on the tackle. High and tempo offense here, Brian. They're yeah. going no huddle. Hezekiah has pushed it up right away. Oh, but we're. No, the play had not been blown in yet, I think. Oh, no. Timeout. So, timeout, Calvin. So, Calvin's defense a little bit rattled here. They're back on their heels and they got to come up with a stop because uh, they've gotten River East has turned the field on them now. They've. they've gotten probably about 60 70 yards in this one series two strong plays in a row is going to do that to a defense but you know I've seen Calvin play pretty well I think that they can get themselves back into it 
Scores 10 nothing for River East, so Calvin's got to make sure that they uh, stop him here because you don't want to go down uh, at halftime by more than 10 points here. Hard to come back from that. So with our timeout, 424 left in the second quarter of the Winnipeg High School Football League CTV Bowl from Investors Group Field. I thank you again for joining us tonight. So Hezekiah will start with four receivers to his right, but will hold, hang on to it and find some gap, a gap right up the middle. Eventually tackled on the play by number two, Brock Gates from Calvin. But what a great run by Hezekiah. What? So first down, first and 10 from the 21-yard line of Calvin. By bringing out the uh, the four receivers, you bring in all four of those DBs and a linebacker over to the far side, giving a wide open field right here. If you let it roll, you see that there's nothing but real estate once Hezekiah gets through the line of scrimmage. Nice run by Hezekiah. Hezekiah will hang on to it, but this time he's tackled almost right away. Might have actually dropped over on the other side of the line of scrimmage, but not much more. Eric Duquette on the play there on the tackle. Nice job by uh, filling that hole and, and wrapping up Hezekiah. He wrapped him up nicely that he couldn't pitch the ball up to the running back. Actually a loss on the play. It looked to me like he'd actually gained a yard, but they're saying he was tackled behind the line of scrimmage. So second and 11 from the 22 yard line. And Hezekiah will this time look to pass and now will that off the turf attempted to number 27 from River East, Ryland Griffiths. He was wide open too. Hezekiah just maybe didn't set up, get it, all of his uh, momentum going on in his front foot there. And Ryland Griffiths, uh, just looking at some of the stats on this young man, six feet, 220 pounds. You wouldn't want to get in front of him, Greg. No, you wouldn't, Brad. So River East is lining up to kick a field goal. Once again, Reese White. And it's up and flag on the play. And it would have been dead. No, so let's see the call on this one. Procedure against. Procedure against River East. So it's going to force them to move back five yards, Brian. The uh, Reese Wick. Uh, Can they decline the penalty here, though, Greg? Because it is a third down, and the and the uh, the field goal, the the field goal didn't make it, so can they just decline it? And I take thought they whistled football. it before 22. the kick occurred. Oh, five yard penalty. Sorry, I missed that. So they'll have to move him back five more yards, and Wick had enough leg on it to make it through from another five yards. It gives him a, another opportunity, a second chance to get this this kick. I'm impressed with his leg. Yeah, this so this is about a 35, 34 and a half yard field goal. No win, so that's it's looking so, good yeah, for the, the flags are pretty much hanging straight down on the in the goalpost. The ball is up, and more than enough distance, and there it is. So with 2:39 left in the second quarter, River East goes up 13 to nothing against Calvin. And let's see with 2:39 if Calvin can do something once they get the ball back here. Nice kick by Wick. He's styling on that one. Yeah, styling and profiling. And he's he's uh, had some some good leg tonight. So that being said, Greg, what do you think that Calvin really needs to do to get themselves back into this game on this series? Well, I think Calvin just needs to focus on fundamentals. Uh, they have had a couple turnovers and a couple drop balls here and there, and I I think what the game plan for River East is is just to blitz and and get into the into um, Rose's face and, and don't give him a lot of time. So, you know, concentrate on everybody, pick up one one person, one one defensive player, and give the quarterback some time. So Morose will start in the shotgun. Hands off to hand off to number 15, who might get a couple of yards on the play. Jesmond McFarlane. So going back to that River East field goal, Reese Wick is also a two-sport star. He also plays soccer, Brian, so makes sense that he's a good kicker. Tackled in the play there by number 50, Spencer Pilon. So 
So that will make it second and seven. It was a gain of three. Some roses back and he will look to pass. In his face is number 27 oh. who grabs it, but he will be called on a horse call a tackle. Tackled on the play by number 27, Ryland Griffiths, but that will be a horse collar tackle for sure. Major foul, horse collar, River East, number 26, 15 All right, yard so I just want to illustrate a couple cell. things here. Uh, River East is lining up three D linemen, and with that rush, basically the defensive ends come out wide, and they're giving uh, giving Kelvin a lot of fits. Their O line is giving is not giving a quarterback a lot of time. If we let the play roll here, you'll see 27 there come up field and makes a, a great move on the tackle. Too bad he uh, got a penalty on that one, but a great great job on rush there. So that will be first and ten from the 53 yard line. Rose is back, and he will look to pass again, and they are getting some great rush. Draw through the hands of his intended receiver, number 17, Liam Stevenson. And I have a feeling we're going to get a holding penalty against Calvin here. Yeah, River East defensive line is just dominating the Calvin O line right now. Definitely a hold on that play. Holding, Calvin, number 56, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. So they will make him take it. So it is first and 20 from the 43 yard line of Calvin. Rose, and he will pass to his left. Complete on his play to number five, who will get about eight, nine yards on the play. Completed to number five. So, pardon me, number 25. Adam Fast. That was a great uh, uh, job for the River East uh, defense just to hustle over there and make the play. Nice tackle on that, forcing the running uh, the receiver out of bounds. So that will make it second and 11, a gain of nine yards. Rose looks to his right and through uh, way behind his intended receiver, number 25, Adam Fast. You know, Brian, this is a game of attrition, and uh, I'm just watching, and, and River East is certainly playing at a higher tempo right now than Calvin and, and certainly controlling the line of scrimmage here. So that will make it third and 11 from the 52 yard line. And Calvin will punt. River East has blocked a, a punt already. So they're but lining up for a return. They didn't come this time. They did not even try. Through the hands of number 25 from River East. He'll turn and bring it up and flag way back in behind the play. This, this flag was thrown quite a distance from the where the, in, the infraction was, yeah. yeah where the infraction took place so a illegal block so that will push it back 10 more yards from the, the so minute 16 river East takes over from its own 20 yard line up 13 to nothing Hezekiah hands off, hands it off to Unra, who will be hit pretty close. Might get two or three yards on the play. Tackled on the play by number 92, Terry Barber. Another one of Calvin's IB students, Greg. Yeah, Calvin has a fantastic IB program. And quite a few, there's a, a handful of players that are in that program. So Hezekiah pitches out 
Bayanto to Runra, who finds some room to the right side before eventually being knocked out of bounds at about the 40. And then wasn't sure if I was going to see a flag there, Greg. But by the way, he was actually pulled down after he crossed the out the uh, the sidelines. Yeah, I agree, Brian. I thought there would have been a, a late hit here. The the tackler ex certainly extended that in out of bounds and took him down where he didn't need to. I think Kelvin got away with one there. So that'll be first and 10 from the 40 yard line with 45 seconds left before the half. So Hezekiah will hang on to the ball and cut to oh. his right and find some room. And will get past two or three and eventually pushed out of bounds by number two, Brock Gates and also number 98, Trishon uh, Ballers. So 37 seconds left and Sure. Hezekiah with, with a, a beautiful run on that. River East continues to put the pedal to the metal right to the uh, to the buzzer here. 20 number 10 caught great run by number 20 Unra again tackled on the play this time by number 94 from Calvin and that's Ryland Galbraith. River East should Think about doing a timeout here. Are well, they going to go no huddle? Still we clock is running though. No. Second and two. Hezekiah will throw and will complete to his receiver at number 25, who will eventually fall down at number uh, sorry, uh, tripped up and, and falls at the 25 yard line. He is number 25 from River East. Funk Clements. I think the tackle on the play by his, was. Uh, Evan Olford, number 23. If he wouldn't have made that tackle, you, I think he would have scored, Brian. And River East does call its timeout. So 18 seconds left, and River East will talk about what it wants to do. With 18 seconds, you can almost get three plays. So if they're if they're smart and try to get out of bounds and stop the clock, I think they could possibly get three plays here, and they're certainly threatening. And I, we we just saw them uh, the series before kick a field goal from about the 35. So th they're definitely in field goal range right now. I, I really appreciate how well coached River East is. They, they, the team is hustling in and out and uh, executing at a very high level. So, well, well, good job on the River East coaches to have this team well prepared. So, just ahead of the half, folks, just so you know, we, we will run a bit of a highlight package and then come back to you in about 15 minutes after the, the break. So, please come back, join us then. Hezekiah finds, oh! Throw up the middle to number 27 from River East. Ryland Griffiths, but unfortunately just a little bit behind him and wasn't able to haul it in. So that will make it second and 10 from the 25 yard line. So yes, as I said folks, we will have a bit of a highlight package to end the half there. So please, uh, Come back to, we'll run that and then come back to us after the half at about 15 minute break. Run this time by number 20. But grabbed and thrown back on the play by number 99 from Calvin and that was with some authority, Isaiah Latonder. Number 99 from Calvin Latonder. Oh boy, it kind of reminds me of Eddie Steele, former Calvin uh, Clipper and, and current defense alignment for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Once again, good luck to the Bombers this weekend out in uh, Regina, taking on the Riders. So third and seven, that will have, and we have a whistle. And it looked like Calvin was coming. We're waiting for the call. No not, time left on the clock, so somebody, this will be the last play. Not sure if somebody called timeout or what, what the whistle please is. Please reset the clock to zero, zero, one. One second, please. So they're putting one second back on the clock again. This should still be the final play of the half. And we invite you to come back later tonight at 7.30 also when we will have the Division One final between the Vincent Massey Trojans and the St. Paul's Crusaders. 
here on LRSD TV. I just need to remind you that you do need to go back to LRSD.TV and select that game. And it is coming in on a different channel. Ball is up. Oh, it just hits the crossbar. There, there is a flag down, and I believe Calvin was offside on this play. We might get another chance for River East. So just another note, folks, here. We got some, uh, in case uh, you're watching along with us, please join us uh, with hashtags LRSD football or even Winnipeg, uh, sorry. Offside. Hashtag WHSF2018. Repeat third down. If you got something to say, let us know. So we will go again. Reese White is five yards closer, though. Blocked. Oh, blocked on the play. And fall, fell and recovered on the play by looks like number 92. Well, pretty Reece. amazing. Uh, Reese Wick, earlier in a series, he hit the upright, had a second try and got it. This series, he had a field goal, hit the upright again, and this time it's blocked. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to, uh, looks like we're going to try and get an interview down on the field. And then after that, we will have a series of, of highlights. And then we have a bit of a break, and we invite you to join us. So, for now, Greg and, uh, and, and I. I am down here on the sideline with the head coach of River East, Sean Olesquich. Sean, how do you feel about your team's play in the first half going into the second half with the lead? Uh, we just got to keep doing what we're doing defensively right now. Um, uh, that block there hurt us at the end, though, but a great first half there. Offensively, we moved the ball a couple long drives there. Um, defensively, we pitched a shutout this half, so hopefully do the same thing the second half um, and uh, come out strong. we got to come out strong in the second half. Do you hope that the momentum of your first half going in with the lead is going to continue in the second half? Well, we know they're going to come out hard right away, and we got to take their best shot right away, uh, get stops, get out of here. Do you believe that the cold weather is affecting your team's play in any way? Are you trying to adapt to this uh, environment? No, we are, our team's built to play in this cold weather, and we love it. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. Thank you so much. That was the head coach of the River East Kodiak, Sean Oleskowicz. We, we are now going to show you some of the highlights from this first half of this championship match.
Podcast Media Program here at ATC is an excellent and fun eight-credit program that gives the students the opportunity to be a part of the TV, radio, and media industry. They're going to learn the basics of broadcast media, so they're going to be learning how to be on-air people, how to work a camera, be technical people behind the scenes, editing, special effects, graphics, we're show them how to do films, documentaries, news. There's so many aspects to broadcasting nowadays. It's just not as simple as I'm going to be a cameraman at a news station. They can do so much more. So uh, we're going to teach a lot of different aspects of this industry. Students work on state-of-the-art computers, audio equipment, professional cameras, and a fully mobile production studio. That studio travels from school to school broadcasting live events on the LRSD.TV online TV station. The equipment we're using here at ATC is close to professional broadcast as we possibly can afford. Obviously some things are very expensive so we can't afford buying all those things, but we're using professional cameras. Uh, we have a full-size switch here which is very expensive and we have a lot of equipment here including a radio station that's using professional radio software, the same stuff you'd see at a radio station. We're trying to emulate industry as best we possibly can with what we have here, and I think it's really cool that students get to use these kind of toys at a high school level. Students also get to work on LRSD TV and LRSD radio. This will give students hands-on opportunities and real experiences that you would find on a professional job site. We actually are creating a TV station here and a radio station for students to hone their skills. The best way to do it is continuing to do it hands-on. So one of the things that we do a lot of are sporting events for television. And we're, we're going to be starting a radio program this year where students will actually be on the air and be able to be heard by family and friends on the internet. It's because of opportunities like this that makes the students excited to be part of this program. I would really say that this program has a lot to give. They teach you everything in every single detail, the theory part, the practical things. And uh, also you get to meet a lot of new people over here. You get to make contacts. You get to know about the industry a lot. So it's a really good uh, program if you're thinking about going in uh, photography or videography things. So much in this course that you just don't know before you take it. Like, you don't really know broadcasting is a, you know, a job. Maybe you do. I don't know. Uh, and you, I learned everything about post-production. The teacher is great. He has experience in the industry and we use great equipment. By the end of the program, the goal is to prepare students for a career in the broadcasting industry or to move on to post-secondary education. Students can go on a four-week work experience Thanks to the experience they get here using professional equipment and broadcasting sporting events, students have the opportunity to get a job in the industry and find entry-level employment in the field as general operators, television assistants, camera operators, editors, and more. Now I work for Dome Productions that works under TSN and they do sports such as the Jets and the Bombers. So Mr. P gave out my name to TSN and got me the job for the Bombers and I did Parab. So they liked me and I ended up getting another job with the Jets, so I do the score bug for them. You want to join this exciting program? Go to our website or call us at 204-237-8951. Do you want a rewarding career where the work is varied and there's never a dull moment? Imagine yourself using the latest diagnostic scan tools, repair computer software, and the newest tools and equipment while learning to diagnose and repair vehicles. ATC's Automotive Technology Program is your first step. ATC learn the various systems on a vehicle. They learn the fundamentals of braking systems, steering and suspension, drive lines, and we do that in theory in a classroom. We do that in a lab, which is a more controlled environment where we can apply some of those concepts, and then in a live shop environment. ATC has a fully equipped 12-bay shop as well as a lab and a classroom. Our facility is equipped with the latest in diagnostic software and equipment. Our tools and equipment in our shop are similar to what you find in industry. One of the things that's unique to ATC is the amount of time that students spend 
in our programs and as a result it's sort of a very collaborative environment and teachers and students learn to work together. Students at ATC finish the program with a four-week work practicum where they get to apply the concepts that they've learned here in a real work environment. Students who successfully complete our program go on to work in dealerships, independent repair facilities, um, and they're not limited to just that. Some of them take those skills and transfer them into heavy duty, um, highway trucks and that kind of stuff as well. So if you have a passion for cars and you want to work in a fast-paced, cutting-edge industry, this is the place for you. Calvin Clippers is his team trails going into the second half 13 to 0. Coach, not exactly the first half you guys wanted. What adjustments are you guys looking to make? Uh, move the ball offensively. Defensively, we're doing great. Two long passes. We had a block punt for a touchdown, special teams. And uh, we're only two scores down. If our offense shows up, you know, two quick possessions, and we're right back into this thing. So I think we're getting the ball to start the second half. So hopefully we make the right decisions and uh, the right adjustments, and we come back and win this thing. There's no doubt that it's pretty chilly out here. How has the weather affected the ball game? Uh, I don't really think it is. I know my kicker was complaining the ball was a bit slippery, but other than that, you know, guys are dropping balls they should be catching. Maybe nervous, I'm not sure, but we'll fix it for the second half. You guys looking to keep the ball on the ground here in the second half? Uh, we'll see what happens. Whatever, uh, whatever the defense dictates here, so we'll, we'll think of something. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank Good you. luck in the second half. That was Coach John Ramu of the Calvin Clippers. We'll now throw it up to our broadcast booth where our color and play-by players stand by. Greg, Greg Kiesman and Brian Cameron. Take it away, guys. Back, ladies and gentlemen, for the second half of the CTV Bowl, the Division II Winnipeg High School Football uh, League Championships. Uh, I'm Brian Cameron again. Uh, thank you for coming back and joining me and Greg Kiesman, my colleague, uh, this afternoon as we will tell you uh, keep it keep uh, bringing this game to you from Winnipeg uh, so, pardon me investors group field so once again Reese White kicks off for River East and fielded on the play fumbled. both to return but fumbled on the play and we're waiting for the call from the referee yes it is a turnover so unfortunately, Calvin will give up the football right away to start off the second half after receiving the kick. You know, Coach Ramu was just saying with uh, with our uh, reporter on down on the field about making plays and making bad decisions, and and uh, you know something like this is just it could be the uh, nail in the coffin for uh, Calvin here. Although lots of football to go, we never know what's going to happen. And a, a very slick move as they just sort of throw the ball up. I do not think Calvin was expecting that. Quick through by, uh, pardon me, quick, I'm so excited about that. I just it came out of nowhere. Hezekiah just sort of tosses the ball up and one of uh, his receiver there just exploded from the line and wide open. That was kind of a sleeper play. We'll call that play. That play was lit. So first and ten, uh, first and goal from the five-yard line, and Hezekiah will hang on to the ball, but it's caught behind the line this time. And there, there, Calvin's saying it's a fumble. Tackled on the play by number 99 from Calvin, uh, Isaiah Latonder. And we're waiting for the call from the referee to see if it is a fumble or not. Hezekiah is the player that's injured for River East, Brian. And this could be big for River East as he comes off the field holding what appears to be his right hand. And he continues to hold it as he walks off the field. So number seven, Neil Payne is in a quarterback for River East. We'll keep an eye on uh, Hezekiah on the sideline here. And Neil, uh, during the regular season, only had seven pass attempts. 
So he will hand it off to number 20, uh, Unra. And will be caught well behind the line of the scrimmage. Tackle on the play by number 98, Treshawn uh, Bowlers. So Coach uh, Rami is pretty happy with his defense here, not giving up a major score. After a, a rough uh, turnover and, uh, and a huge play by River East. I'm watching them work on Hezekiah on the sidelines, Greg. And I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but he's actually down on a knee. I think they're looking at his hand, Brian. I you know, that's his right hand, at throwing hand. So, well, so Reese White will get ready for another field goal attempt and will kick it well to the left of the field goal and it will go right through the end zone. Oh no, it will be fielded and brought out and out of bounds at about the two yard line. So in amateur football rules, Brian, if you bring it out, uh, you get it on the 20 yard line. So smart play by Calvin there, not to give up a single point. But there's still a, it, it's still a two-score game for Calvin. So um, oh, no harm, no foul on that turnover to start the game. That's right. So now Calvin uh, offense gets to reset here and, and see what they can do. See what kind of adjustments uh, Calvin's come up with over halftime here and, and uh, see how they're going to attack this River East defense that's actually flying around all game today. So first and ten. And Daniel Moroz will continue to work the shotgun like he's done all game. Hand it off to number 15 who will cut towards the middle but finds some more right room to the right. Skips over a defender and should have enough, but fumbled again. But Calvin it says it still has the ball. Well, you got to hang on to that football. Yeah, that's a greasy play right there, Brian. Yeah. As they sometimes will say, you can't believe it's not butter. Just got to hang on to that football, folks. That was a great run. I'll tell you what, if uh, there's a lead blocker, number 98 for Calvin, that was just rolling people over. His last name is Bowlers. Appropriate for a fullback. So that will give Calvin the football in their own 38-yard line. Great field position after all this. Down 13 with just under nine minutes left in the third quarter, and Rose will put back and throw to an O'Connor in the play by number 25. Great catch. They will get it to about midfield. Ball squirted out, but I'm pretty sure the ball carrier or a receiver was down by uh, on the ground. So first down for Calvin. They're rolling here, Brian. They're going quick offense here too. Great throw by Moroz to his receiver, Adam Fast. And that will be offside, I'm almost positive. Caught on the play and complete to number 81, but I think this is coming back, Greg. Yeah, the uh, Kelvin, uh, sl both slot backs were offside on that play just a little early, leaving across the line of scrimmage here. Complete on the play to number 81, Abdi. And that's the first time I think we've called his name today. So that will bring the football back. Make it first and 15. As a result of the penalty. Let's see if Calvin can capture some of that momentum again and keep the ball moving. Rose will fake and open a receiver right up the middle. The number 15 who finds some room and runs to his left. Tackled from behind on the play. What a great catch and run up to the 40 yard line of River East. Tackle on the play by Ethan Topping. I think he took the worst of that one. Yeah, great catch by 15, uh, Dason Jesmer McFarlane. And Morose will get them up and moving right away. Quick offense. Calvin's in the groove here. And he will hand off to 15, who will move to his right side and go. Tackled on the play by number 10. So there he is. Hezekiah oh. is back in the game again and flag on the play. There is a flag. They got Hezekiah was chirping, I think, and 
uh, style and profile, and Calvin did not like that. They gave him a little bit of a pop there, and the referee saw the pop. Number seven, uh, he, he's, he, let, he's being told. Nathan, Neil Payne. So they did flag Four River still. East on that one. Yeah, I have a feeling it was an unsportsmanlike conduct call. Well, certainly Calvin's got the momentum on their side, Brian. So that will take them all the way down to the 22-yard line of River East. First and 10. 7.02 left in the third quarter. Moreau's in the shotgun. And he will this time throw deep into the corner. Oh, tried to adjust to the play. Looking for his receiver, number six, Daniel Morose. I'm oh, sorry, Robin Brooks. Flag in the play in the backfield, though. Nice adjustment by the receiver there. Just uh, just couldn't come up with the catch. Roughing the passer. River oh, East another major foul against yard River East. 15-yard penalty will bring it all the way down penalty to the seven-yard line. The roughing the passer call, Greg. You know what? The wheels are coming off for uh, River East here. They have to gain control of themselves and play disciplined football. So first and goal from River East's seven-yard line, aided by a few penalties as they go, but this still puts them in scoring position. Rose in the shotgun. Hands off, looks to the right of number 15, and he will pu push oh. him just short of the goal line. Oh, what a hit. Beautiful tackle coming up on that play. Wonderful tackle. Didn't get the player number. So this, and, and Rose gets him up on the line right away, so second and goal. Pitch off and right easily under the inside is number 17 untouched on the play in Stevenson. And that will get Calvin back into the game again. It is now 13 to 6 with 608 left in the third quarter. And Calvin, it is now a football game. We got things going here for Calvin, Greg. We do have a game here, Brian. Essentially untouched on that touchdown as they ran in. Calvin attempting the single point here, make it a six point difference. Point is up, kick a after, point after by number nine from Calvin, Ethan Na uh, Nagler. Doesn't surprise me that he's a punter and kicker, was a, he also is a soccer player for Calvin. You know, Brian, that, that's exactly what Coach Romney wanted. He wanted the offense to come out and establish themselves. And after a little bit of a rocky, rocky start with the turnover on the kickoff, uh, the defense, the Kelvin defense uh, did a nice job, a goal line stand there. And now the Kelvin offense has come out, aided by a few penalties, undisciplined penalties by River East. But still, they came out and put a score on the board here to make it 13-7. So fortunately, no, uh, no harm done by that turnover on the opening kickoff for the second half. But... So Calvin comes back and gets themselves back into the game again. It is now 13 to seven with 6.08 left in the third quarter. Lots of time, lots of football left. Well, certainly Calvin brought their A game out in the second half here. So kicked off by Ethan Nagler again. Picked up on the play, returned by number 25. We will find some room to the right side, but eventually tackled at about the 41, 42 yard line. Great return for, great field position for River East. So Funk Clements, great pickup and bring it up to the 42 yard line. You know, Brian, I, I get a distinct feeling that these two teams do not like each other. Yeah, I'm, as I'm watching some of the stuff going on in the field, there's a little, always seems to be a little extra push, a little extra shove. Hezekiah is back in the game again. He, That's good back to see. And he will throw it to the middle and it's all oh, knocked down on the play. Great defense. Defended on the play by number 26 from Calvin Grayson Nizmoata. And I'm going to apologize again, folks, uh, as I usually do every game, if I am not pronouncing your names uh, correctly.
correctly, uh, uh, I, I want to extend my apologies to everybody for that. Doing the best we can. Second and ten for uh, River East here. That's Kai's back. And he will take it to the right, find a bit of room, but eventually talk, tackle the play by number 98, Treshawn Ballers again. And his name has come up a few times over the last few plays, Greg. Yeah, Kelvin defense is uh, relentless in their pursuit to the ball and, and lots of tenacity in their uh, in their exchanges with, uh, with the uh, River East players here. So third, that makes it third and nine, and River East will punt. Just over five minutes left in the third quarter. Reese White back to uh, punt. And number two, Brock Gates back for Calvin to receive the football. So Rivers took a time count uh, penalty there because they had only 11 players on the field. So they'll move him back five yards and try again. It's smart play, smart, well coached uh, team here in Rivers. River they East took the five yard seven, penalty. Five yard penalty. Uh, having only 11 players on the field. Well, this is exciting, Greg, now that. Uh, Calvin's got themselves back into the football game. Sort of takes a funny bounce, and but picked up and returned on the play by number six, who will move to his right, find yeah. a bit of room, and come around the corner and beat number seven. Eventually brought down on the tackle, tackled on the play by number 52 from River East, and that would be Joshua Desjardins, but fielded on the play by number six, Robin Brooks. Great run by Robin, and I'll tell you, momentum seems to have shifted towards Calvin's side again. That play was dynamite for Calvin. So that will give Calvin a f uh, first down on the River East 28 yard line, down 13 to 7. Hands it off 15 and will find some room to the right side. And will work his way up for eight or nine yards. Great run. Jesmer McFarland again. And they're going to hurry up. And Sam has a cut. So that will make it second and two. Hands on to McFarlane. And we'll find lots of room right up the middle and just keeps dancing. Lots of shaking and baking going on up the field. Gets himself all the way up to about the five yard line. So first to go, Calvin. Rivers is trying to substitute somebody in. Calvin's going to hurry up, deep, uh, hurry up offense here. Rivers says be careful they don't get caught with too many men on the field. And it's going to happen. Yeah, yep. there's a flag. Run by play up the middle by number 17. Uh, carries. Liam okay, Stevenson. Tackled on the play Tackle by number by 15. Tackled by Joshua DeJarle. DeJarle. But there was a flag on the play. Too many men. Just was not able to get out of the end zone fast enough. Smart coaching by Calvin just to go hurry up there. River East was trying to substitute, put another D lineman down on the field. Uh, unfortunately for River East, they were caught with too many men. So that will give it down to about the two and a half yard line. So River first East, and goal half, half the half distance to go line. line, first down. And on Stevenson, but he will be caught almost right away, maybe even for a bit of a loss. Tackled on the play by number 77 from River East. And that's Jesse Penner. Jesse Penner, six foot four, 240, Greg. Well, second down here, Brian. They got a, I wonder if this is three down football for Calvin. And this time, Rose will roll out to his right. 
A complete inside the end zone to number 25. And that will tie the football game. It is now 13 all. Jordan. With two minutes and 25 seconds left in the, th in the third quarter, Calvin has brought themselves back from a 13 to nothing deficit to 13 all with the point after coming. Great rollout by the quarterback, Daniel Moroz. All right, so we're going to take a look at this play here. You'll see that there's a fake handoff by Moroz. He's going to boot out to his right here, and we're going to watch number 25 come all the way across the play here, and he's going to slide in at about the 10-yard mark there and be wide open. So let it roll. And the point after is good. It's a great execution on that play, on the scoring play for Calvin. So for the first time this game, Calvin Clippers take over the lead and will and are ahead 14 to 13 with 225 left in the third quarter. But lots of football left to go tonight. Folks watching at home, you'd love to see it. Well, here we go. Let's see how River East can sub let's see how River East can respond. Now, it does appear to us that uh, River East quarterback Sam Hezekiah is back after whatever that injury was, but we'll never know to the extent that it's going to hurt. Fielded on the play by number 25, we'll find some room to the right side. Eventually tackled it just short of the 40 yard line. Tackled in the play by number 27. Willem Guzzi and number nine, Ethan Nagler. So River East will take over just short of its own 40 yard line. Down for the first time in this game, 14 to 13. Hezekiah is in the game. Hezekiah will move, run to his left. We'll look, getting in behind some blockers and will pitch it up, or look like he was going to pitch it out, but eventually tackled on the play. A gain of maybe a couple of yards. Over on the far sidelines, you have the Calvin cheer team along with lots of fans, boisterous fans, Brian. They're they, making uh, the chanting defense here. They've sure exploded since uh, Calvin took over the lead. So that will make it second and eight from their own 42 yard line. Hezekiah will hand off to number 20, Unra. But Unra is caught almost right away. Maybe back to the original, I mean, sorry, to the line of scrimmage, so. Galbraith, 94 at the tackle. Good job by Galbraith coming up I'm and looking making at a huge it, play. In fact, it was a bit of a loss on the play. So we're down to second and uh, or third and nine almost. River East will be forced to punt. N number six. From Calvin back to receive Robin Brooks. Reese Wyke will punt to his right and it will eventually head out of bounds. At a, they're giving him at the 39 yard line. So Calvin will take over from its own 39 yard line with 53 seconds left in the third quarter. 2018 C CFL Bowl. Winnipeg CTV Bowl. Pardon me? CTV Bowl. Winnipeg High School Football League Division II Championship from uh, Invested Group Field. And again, I thank you for joining us tonight. My, I am Brian Cameron, and I'm with Greg Kiesman. LRSD TV presentation. And folks, make sure you stay tuned in for the presentation of the awards and trophies. Run on the play by 15, but 
He will be brought down well behind the line of scrimmage by number 52 from River East. Great pursuit by Joshua Jajarle. Read that one really well. So that was a about a six or seven yard loss. Making it seven, second and 16 or so. So let's see how Moreau's and the Calvin offense will deal with this one. Rose will look and oh, oh! socked to the play and fumbled and recovered. The ball is still loose. Hezekiah with the tack with the sack on that. And I don't think Moreau saw him coming, Greg. That was a boom play, Brian. That was boom. So when I'm looking at the replay here, it, it appears to me that that Moreau's did not even see him coming, and so that forced the ball loose. And of course, that was the final play of the third quarter, so we will switch sides. But in the meantime, what a fantastic quarter of football. Calvin gets itself back into the game and takes the lead down 13 to nothing at the half, and now up 14 to 13 after two touchdowns. Hezekiah was lined up at halfback on that. He just came on the blitz on, on the backside. Smart play by Hezekiah. What he did is he actually put his shoulder on shoulder, to avoided contacting the quarterback's head to make sure that there was no ref in the quarterback. Penalty. Great speed. So he River East will take over, first and 10, and he will hand off to Unra, who will find some room right up the middle, but then grabbed and tackled and thrown down on the play by number 99 from Calvin. What a great tackle by, by Isaiah Latonder. Back-to-back -back hits in this game. Holy moly, Brian. Major hits. We'll watch the replay here. Unra, if you would have cut to the right, he would have had a little bit more space there, but uh, Latonder uh, certainly made him pay for that run. So that will make it second and four after a six-yard gain. Hezekiah pitches out and in fact, we look to pass and throws the ball up. Oh, through the, just through the hands of the intended receiver, Reese Wyke. Number 25 from River East. Funk Clements. You know, kudos to uh, Calvin defensive backs there staying with their receivers th through the entire play there. Um, Funk Clements really did not have anybody to throw the ball to on that one. Nobody wide open at least. Well, Brian, the drama here at uh, IGF is certainly mounting. And this is what really makes it fun for everybody. Reese Wyke is uh, attempting a 32-yard field goal. Ball is up, and it is wide left. So Calvin will try to take it out, but it's brought down in the end zone. There is a flag on the far side of the field. I think Calvin might have been offside. So taken on the play by number two, Brock Gates, but tackled, and we'll see what the flag is. And initial indications is for Calvin. This is the third field goal attempt for uh, Reese Wyke. And that, that's a costly penalty by Calvin because it was third and five and with offside here. Ken Lazarek's going to announce offside. offside. Calvin, number two, five yard penalty. That's actually going first to get River East a first down. Yep, very costly penalty here. So instead of a missed field goal, we, we now have uh, possession of the football. Hezekiah will be in the shotgun, and he will roll to his right and throw the ball up. And it intercepted on intercepted. the play. Looks like 23, Brian, on the interception. Evan Offord intercepts the ball after a bit of a tip-up, I think, into the air. But whatever, however it's taken, it's taken. It is Calvin who gets the ball back. and Calvin's popping here. They're popping. So they will take over from about their own six yard line. 
What an incredible turn of events. And Moroz is not wasting any time. He's got his uh, offense up and going. So he'll throw it out, bit of a pitch out. Oh, through the hands of his intended receiver, number 15. Sean, uh, pardon me, not Sean. Uh, Jesmer McFarlane. I think he just uh, took his eye off the ball there and wanted to run before he actually completed the catch on that one. So this is a big play now for Calvin. Trying to get themselves out of a bit of a hole deep in their own end zone, but still up 14 to 13. Big play for Calvin to try to prevent them from moving any further and get the ball back. Morales goes and comes through the hands. Oh, intercepted on the play by number 10. Sai who take it inside, touchdown! What an incredible play. So Hezekiah intercepts the football and takes it into the end zone and gives River East the, the, the lead again, 19 to 14 with 9.44 left in the fourth quarter. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Defensive touchdown. Huge play by Hezekiah there. He just sat back at center field and just waited for that tip. Wonderful uh, run into the end zone for Hezekiah. So unfortunately for Calvin, they've given up a touchdown on, on a block punt and now a defensive uh, score for River East. Making a score 19-14. So we got a time count violation against River East. And I think Hezekiah is not even sure he's aware yet. Well, I'm just wondering here if uh, River East is going to go for two here. Well, it appears they lined up for it because I don't see their typical kicker, Reese Wyke, out to take the point after. I think they were hoping to make this a full f uh, touchdown lead. So that will make it a 10-yard two-point attempt if that's what they're going to do, and they are going to do. They're going to try. Well, they're up by five, so if they score two, it makes it a, a seven-point game. Hezekiah will hand it off to Unra, who will try to find something right. Nothing there. Will continue to work and move to his right and push and push, but eventually knocked out of bounds at about the two-yard line. So no two-point convert. Great contain and great pursuit by the Calvin Clippers defense, and so that prevents a two-point convert. Keeps the score at 19-14 with 9.44 left in the fourth quarter. Number 99, Latender, coming across and making a play. I think I might have to call him Mr. Latender on that one. No Holy moly. Great effort by Unra here just to juke and jive and shake and bake. And we can just see on the instant replay there, Latender just delivers a, a, a blow. As they say, be the hammer, not the nail. Was. So we have a five point game here, Brian. 19 14 for River East. With 9.44 left in the game. And these are the kind of football games that we love to cover. Both, both teams into it. Who knows, could have uh, finished with the win at the end of the game today. Kicked by Reese Wyke. Fielded at about the 33 yard line. Fielded by 25 from Calvin, Adam Fast. Brought down by number five, Ethan Topping. I don't know if you mentioned this, Greg, but number five, Ethan Topping for River East is on the under 18 football, Manitoba football team. Yeah, there's a few players uh, on both rosters that are certainly representing uh, Team Manitoba at various uh, events here for football and, and going on to uh, university. And there's some great players on this field today. Running the inside by number 15 from, uh, from Calvin. Jesmer McFarland, who has seen the ball quite a few times today. Ethan Topping lost his helmet there on the play. Looks like he might have a helmet issue, so we're going to have to replace him. So number in for uh, Topping is Sean King, number 13.
Topping might have a broken clip on his helmet. So Monroe's second and five will hands it off to number 15 again. Jesmer McFarland. And what a great run to get the first down. And great blocking up front by the Calvin Clipper front line to give him that space. Calvin's going with their high tempo offense once yeah, again. They're keeping it moving. So Monroe's back and he will hand it off again. Darn no, the sorry, fumble. fumble on the play and recovered by River East by number 50 from River East. Spencer Pilon. Big turn of events for River East. Got a bit of a feeling there may have been a breakdown in communications on that play, Greg. Yeah, it wasn't a smooth exchange between the running back and quarterback, that's for sure. It was a re um, zone read uh, play and, and either the quarterback didn't put it all the way in or the running back didn't take it all the way. So huge play here for River East. Just getting the ball back just inside uh, River, uh, Calvin's uh, center field here. So Hezekiah has to handle that and take it on the play by number 20, Unra again, and tackled after a gain of about four yards. Tackled on the play by uh, number 94 and number 96, so that would be Ryan Galbraith and Dylan Hess. So second and five, and Hezekiah will hand off again but to number 25, who will look for some room on his right side and eventually pushed out of bounds. So ran on the play by Adam Fast, tackled on the play by Funk Clements. We'll just watch the replay here. You can see 25. Running, he almost got to the corner there. If he was able to turn the corner, he would have gotten y enough yardage for the first down. So that's third and short. And that's the guy who will take it and find lots of room up the middle. And in fact, we'll have well more than enough for the first down and have about eight or nine yards. So that will be a first and 10. Looks like at about the 28, 27 yard line. Calvin 6.50 left in the fourth quarter. Calvin's just trying to punch the ball out on that play there, trying to get the ball back for their offense. So Hezekiah in the shotgun, and he will hang on to it, and he's just going to take it himself. Move to the left, and he's caught and brought down behind or close to the line of scrimmage by number 99, Isaiah Latonder. Latonder's also representing Canada at the U18 uh, football uh, tournament down in the U.S. I can see why he's a fantastic football player. Certainly his engine doesn't stop running. Hands off again to, oh no, hangs on to it himself. Pushed way back on the play. Taken on the play by number 52 from River East and that will be Joshua Dejarle. So it looks like River East is going to line up for a punt. So they're going to be looking to nail this uh, inside the 10 yard line and give Calvin a super long field. Five minutes and 31 seconds left in the fourth quarter in the Division II Winnipeg High School Football League Championships for 2018. Oh, that was a misplay and eventually it, tackled behind the play. Recovered, although they would have had the football anyway. They might have been trying to fake punt there, Brian. So picked up on the play by number 24 from uh, from Calvin, and that will be uh, Andrew Plischke. Well, that gives good field position to Calvin on their own 44-yard line. Yeah, that was a costly miss for uh, River East because it gives Calvin great field position with 
Coming up to five minutes left in the fourth quarter. Down by five points. Hands off and inside. And number 15 will push and get about six, seven yards. So Jesmer McFarlane continues to rumble. And he's had a good game tonight. Yeah, he's run the ball very effectively between the tackles. Moroz keeps this ball moving quickly and will hand it off again. No, he will not. He will pass. And just behind his intended receiver, number two, Brock Gates. So this makes it a third down play. Now four minutes and 35 seconds left. About three. It looks like a long, almost four yards, actually. The board is showing three, but I'm going to say it looks more like four, Greg. Um, yeah, it looks like a four yard. And we have a bit of an injury on the play also. Yeah, it might be Latondra. Now he's been playing both ways all game, so he might be just a little winded out there. Yeah, he's up and he's up and moving off under his own power, but he's actually listed on on our list here as a, both a running back and defensive line. He's had a, a great game for Calvin. Looks like he's just coming off on his own steam, so I'm sure we'll see him back in the game right away. And ladies and gentlemen, with about a three and a definitely a long three, Moroz will go for it. And he will roll out to his right. Look inside, and intercepted on the play by number 20. Attempted pass by Moroz is intercepted on the play by number 20, Owen Unroth from River East, and they will get the ball back and flag up on the play. Usually an indication of an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Yeah, I didn't really like that play call for Calvin. I, I really thought, uh, you know, if you're going to roll a quarterback left, uh, it's harder for the quarterback to turn and throw the ball. So maybe uh, maybe they had something else called and it, uh, the play just broke down. Objection of conduct, River East number 20, 15 yard penalty, first down. So objection of conduct against River East will push it back. Now they will get the football, but not the field position they would have had a minute ago. So 4.14 left in the fourth quarter and Calvin needs to get the ball back. So if they can push a two and out here, they'll have lots of time. I think we'll see Hezekiah hand the ball off. Taken on the play by number 52 from River East. And that's Joshua Desarle, who is also listed as being on Team Manitoba. Time out on the field here. So big play here for both sides with 3.31 left in the fourth still, quarter. Yeah, still lots of time left for Calvin. If they can uh, force a two, if they can stop him here and, and uh, force a, a, a punt, they have lots of time here to score. Great energy coming from the, the Calvin bench with having their, their cheerleaders out tonight. Run by 52, who will find a ton of room right up the middle and a big first down for River East, who gets all the way down to about the 42-yard uh, line of Calvin. So taken on the play by number 52, Joshua Desjarle. All right, I'm just going to illustrate. I want you to watch this part of the line here. It's just going to open up like the Red Sea. Let it roll. You could have drove the bus through that one. Huge hole there. There's a guy fumbles the, the ball, oh. but recovered on the play by, by River East. So they, fortunately for them, they maintained possession of the football, but that is, that is a, a loss about three or four yards on the play 
Lucky bounce for River East on that one. The ball is on the ground. Second and 13. Now is not the time to fumble the ball. Not that there ever is a good time, but two minutes, 42 seconds left in the fourth quarter. There's quads to the right. Run of the play by number 10, who can hang on to the ball. Find a bit of room and will eventually cut out bounds at about. Looking at the 34 yard line, so a couple of yards short of the first down. A great run on the play by uh, Hezekiah. You know, I. I think we'll see a, probably a lot of uh, Hezekiah running the ball. That way you're limiting the amount of exchange, ball exchanges between running back and court, quarterback. Less chance for fumbles as well. And let's face it, he's a pretty darn good football player too. And it, they are going to go for it. So right in the center. And Hezekiah will take it and sneak it up and will easily get the first down. Three or four yards on the play, even beyond the first yard near marker. So... Looks like you managed to get down to about the 30 yard line. So that will be a first down for River East with 226 left in the fourth quarter. And Calvin really needs to stop them soon. Good drive by River East here. They're just pounding the ball. Obviously putting the ball in the hand of hands of Hezekiah and he's having a great uh, series here. Getting lots of yards and first downs. Hezekiah will hang on to it again, a pitch out. Taken on the play by Unra, who finds some room down the left side and tackled down at about the 10 yard of Endley. That should be a first down, and it is. I like the, the play call on that one, Brian. Gives the option to for uh, Hezekiah to keep the ball or, or to pitch it out to the running back. So. Nice, so nicely have, done job. We or nicely under the two minute mark. Nicely run play there by River East. So I'm thinking Calvin needs a turnover. And we have a, a flag down on the play. And once again, we have a delay of game. Time count violation against River East. And it, with under two minutes left, is that loss of down in high school football? It might be. So we're waiting for the call and we're waiting for the indication as to whether or not Time count violation, River East, number 10, 10 yard penalty. Timer, please reset the clock to 139. 139, please. So they have reset the clock back to 139, adding two seconds onto the so Hezekiah takes it, hands it off to number 52. We'll find some room to the right side, but slip. Lost his footing there. He had a lot of room there to. So Joshua Gisarle gets six or seven, and he's still down on the ground, though. He's up, although quite hobbled. I'm not sure if we'll see him in the game, though. although he's not coming out, so maybe it's just a cramp, Greg. Yeah, a lot of these kids could be cramping up, even though it's cold out here, if they're not drinking enough water, they they're, could be cramping up, especially guys like Desarle and, and those guys who are playing both ways. Even in the cold. So second and 15, very big play for both teams here.
Hezekiah receives the ball and moves to his left. And he's pursued. Tries to cut back towards the right, but it's tackled and call on the play by number 99, Latonder. Good pursuit by Isaiah Latonder to bring him down behind and will be a bit of a loss on the play. Five yards or so. Latonder is a little slow getting up. I could see him stretching it. I'm wondering if he's cramping up too. Yeah, he's a little hobbled. So this will make it third and uh, goal, I guess, from the 20. I, I'm watching him walk up to the line again, Greg, and he's, he's struggling a little bit, and I'm wondering if this is a good idea for him to be there right now. Oh, you can't take him out, Brian. He's not going to come out of the game now. Uh, he's not going to let you. He's not going to let you come. He's not going to. Nobody's taking him out of the game. It's called beast mode. So, number one from River East will attempt a field goal. Reese Wyke. And I got to believe Calvin's going to be coming, and they are. But he gets it away. And it is. So that gives River East an eight point lead with a minute 19 left in the fourth quarter of the. CTV Bowl from of the Winnipeg High School Football League's Division II Championship. Well, with a minute 19 left, Brian, I think that's the, the nail in the coffin for uh, Calvin here. Now, it is only an eight-point lead, though. So, touchdown and a two-point convert will tie the game. And a minute 19 is lots of time. So Moroz gets them over the football right away. He's not wasting any time. He'll throw the ball. And, oh, Inter knocked down. Oh. No, almost intercepted on the play, but knocked down on the play by number 25, Funk Clements. What a great, outstanding effort by Clements there, Funk Clements. Boys are putting it, uh, putting all their heart out on this game. That's for sure. A minute 14 left, only five seconds off the clock there. So clock doesn't start till the snap Rose of the ball. back to pass, and he will look and throw it outside and complete on the play and out of bounds to number six, Robin Brooks. Pardon me, pardon me for me. Yes, number six, Robin Brooks, the receiver from uh, Calvin. Great catch on the play. So nice. that brings them up yep. to the 50 yard line. Nice throw too. A minute seven left in the fourth quarter. Stop the clock. And Rose looks back and again he will continues to throw but over the head of his intended receiver. So that makes it second and ten. Rose is getting ball, rid of the ball pretty quickly. That only took four seconds off the clock. And a Kelvin offensive line has given him lots of time to throw. He's gotten, he has good looks downfield, that's for sure. So the one and only good thing about an incomplete pass is it does stop the clock for Calvin. Moves back and he will look downfield to pass again, but it's going to be overhead and almost intercepted again by number 22 from River East. Simon Cosman, intended receiver this time, was number 25 from Calvin Adam Fast. Well, third down, Brian. Big play. River East uh, defense is asking for the fans to make some noise here. Still lots of time for Calvin to score here. Cosman looks out to his right and knocked down on the play by number 21 from River East, Josh Kernahan. And that could be the game here for Calvin and River East as the ball would be turned over on downs and River East will take over from the 50 yard line of Calvin. Great defensive play on by number 21, Josh Kernahan. Yeah, not a lot of receivers were open on that, Brian. They, 
the the uh, Kelvin uh, or sorry the River East uh, defensive backs were in great position there. So 53 seconds left in the fourth quarter of the CTV Bowl, and it appears that River East will be taking this one. Looks like a timeout for River East. Just make sure they have all the necessary players on the field. And just a reminder, don't go away, folks. We're going to have the presentation of the CTV Bowl Championship Trophy and banners for the schools. And we have uh, our Division I Championship game coming up after this. It pits uh, St. Paul's number one team versus Vincent Massey for the Anavitz Bowl Championship. The Division I Winnipeg High School Football Championship from 2018 from Investors Group Field. Typical November Winnipeg football. So 53 seconds. Run on the play by number 52 from River East. That's Joshua Desarle. Gainable five yards on the play, 48 seconds left. And I'm got to believe that River East is just going to try to kill this clock as much as possible. And you know, Brian, there's, uh, I'm sure there's quite a few great 12 players down on the field here who this will be their last game, last high school game. So Hezekiah keeps the ball and finds a bit of room and will eventually run out of bounds out of the 37-yard line. Coaches are telling Hezekiah, hey, next time just take an ego down instead of going out of bounds. But with 21 seconds left and a first down, I don't think there's much, uh, much to worry about in terms of uh, the ball getting turned back to Calvin. So that is a first down. First and 10 from the 36-yard line with 21 seconds left. So barring a turnover. Now to down it one more time. There's 20 seconds left. River East in the victory formation. Congratulations to both Calvin and River East on a well-played CTV Bowl championship game today. And thank you from our, from our perspective for giving us a very exciting game to watch and, and call. So congratulations go to the River East Kodiaks, the 2018 CTV Bowl Winnipeg High School Football League Division II champions. What an excellent game for us to cover, Greg. Yeah, there's the Gatorade bath on uh, the head coach of River East. And, you know, at, at this point in time after starting football in mid-August and winding up in November here, it's uh, what, a, what a great year for uh, River East here. And, some great players on their team. And once again, congratulations to Kelvin. Uh, nothing, they, they left it on the field today. Kelvin had the lead going into the fourth quarter and certainly they, they should, uh, Coach Ramu and, and the staff there should be proud of how the players played today. Congratulations to the Kelvin Clippers who put out an outstanding effort and really brought themselves back into the game. Great third quarter. So stay with us as we are going to be going down to the awards presentations in just a, a few minutes, folks. Uh, and we, we, along with a few highlights, of course, but thank you for joining us tonight at the LRSD presentation of the Winnipeg High School Football League's Division II Championships from both uh, myself, Brian Cowan, and Greg Kiesman. And on behalf of the LRSD TV crew, there's about 20 to 25 students who are actually putting this all together tonight in, in the background and, and, and well done to all of them. Hashtag student made. So Rick, uh, Commissioner Rick Hankwich is down on the field. He's got the presentation table all set up with the trophies and banners. Covered three games in the past two nights, Greg. 
Looking forward to our final one at 7.30 tonight. I invite you again to come back and join us. St. Paul's versus Vincent Massey in the Division I final from Investor Group Field here in Winnipeg. Thank you all for joining us. So I'm interested to hear on who they've chosen in some of the wards. And in my opinion, I got to take uh, Hezekiah from River East and, you know, possibly let, uh, this young Latonder from uh, Calvin for the, from their side, Greg. What do you think? Yeah, I have to agree with you. Uh, Isaiah Latonder, uh, certainly uh, he should be on uh, a lot of university programs uh, radar because he's a, a wonderful football player. You know. It, I think he uh, he played both ways. He played a little bit of running back. He certainly played a, like a nose guard, stand-up nose guard or middle linebacker for for Calvin, and made some great de defensive plays for uh, for Calvin. Uh, Hezekiah certainly, uh, you know, I've I read here that he's uh, off to the University of Manitoba next year, and, and if that's in fact true, then he'll he'll be a welcome addition to the Bison program. I guess he'll be used to playing on this field by then. Thank you folks, we're going to head it down to field and so on behalf of Greg and I, we're going to thank you for joining us. Please stick around for the awards presentations, but of course come back to us in just under half an hour for our final game of the evening. One more, one last reminder that you do need to go back to LRSD.TV and switch to the, to the other game for the different feed, but again, thank you and have a good evening. Joseph Funk Clemens. Hezekiah. First off, Sam, how do you feel about winning the championship? This is outstanding. Just for our school, we haven't been here in 21, 25 years. And us winning this right now, just an unreal feeling. I'm so emotional about it. Like, this is amazing. I'm so blessed to be here in this position. And just to even be playing in this game is just amazing. So it's just huge. How proud are you of your team and the coaching staff for how far your team has come throughout this season? I'm so proud. We came such a long way. In the summer, we were lifting with each other, running outside, doing wind sprints, getting each other ready. And we just, just everything Coach Ali just preached about, he preached about our effort and playing through adversity. And we played through adversity in this game, and we played so tough. So, like, just, I can, I can barely talk. It's just amazing, man. It's, Congratulations on your win, and we wish you the best of luck in your football career. Thank you. That was the MVP of tonight's championship match, Sam Hesekaya. So we will throw you back upstairs to our booth with uh, Brian Cameron and Greg Keesman. Take it away, guys. And finally, I'd like to call upon the captains of the River East Kodiaks to receive the championship trophy, the CTV Bowl, representative of the championship of the Division II in the Winnipeg High School Football League. Well done, River East.